Hello everybody, my name is Roxtus. And I'm Soul Gale. And welcome back to our friend. Wow. Are you ready? I'm ready. Alrighty, Ember, how to. Wow. So, Ember is a Warframe you can get off of Saturn. You can go to Thesis, I believe. Yes. And there is General Sargis Ruck. And you can get all of her components from him from there. You get his her uh, systems, chassis, and your optics. Everything from him. It's pretty obvious because he does burn the world up. <laughs> and then you also get her main blueprint here in the market. You can just go ahead and grab her main blueprint and you will be able to grab and build her. So she is a pretty good Warframe. Uh, she does burn the world down. Uh, fire damage in and of itself is a very good form and a very good type of damage because it is stacking damage. And the more damage that you stack of this type, basically does more and more cumulative damage, bursting it out in faster and faster groups. Now, the main thing for her that you got to kind of remember is she is fire and kind of like fire. It does have its inconsistencies. Uh, you put more wood on the fire, you get a higher fire, you get more damage on that fire. And if you have less heat or if you have less fire, it tends to deal less damage. So there is quite a bit of inconsistency. Shall we take a look at her abilities? We shall. Alrighty. So, she's got a passive. Passive. Receive 5% ability strength for every enemy within 50 meters engulfed in flame. Now, 50 meters is a pretty big range. If you've watched Ash, his ultimate, his selection radius is 50 meters. So you can be pretty far away from pretty much anything. And as long as it's on fire, you'll gain this bonus. This is a huge range though for 50 meters. You can hit anything across the board and you'll be able to gain that 5%. Although I would take this as an inconsistency because you're not always guaranteed to have 5%, but especially with Inferno, Fire Blast, these are big AOE effects that can affect a ton of enemies. You're gonna be able to get that proc up pretty quickly, but you got to keep in mind if you kill those units, then you lose effectively that 5% ability strength. So always keep this in mind when you're modding her out, making sure that you have at least the minimum amount of power strength acquired to be able to get her abilities at her maximum so that you're not always falling behind in the power strength. You want as much power strength as you need to be able to maximize out and be able to build her. Fireball. Charge and release a fiery projectile that ignites enemies on contract. Drain is 25 energy. Damage is 400 to 800. Area damage is for any enemies around that unit is 150 to 300 damage. The radius for this ability is 2 meters to 2.4 meters. And this conditional is upon a combo window. So the damage does go up from 400 to 800, 150 to 300, and radius of two meters to 2.4. Now this is based upon if you charge the ability. You hit the ability, you hold it, and you'll see your reticle light up and it'll do a timer where that ability will fully play out. And as soon as you fully charge that attack, then it will deal increased damage up to 100%. So you'll see your damage go from 400 to 800 150 to 300 for the area of effect damage, basically hitting all the units around you. And the radius will also increase once you fully charge this ability from two meters to 2.4 meters. There is a combo window here, and I'll fully explain this, where it goes for 1.5 seconds. So combo window, as long as you keep on pressing the ability within 1.5 seconds, you'll be able to increase your damage based upon how many times you've pressed the ability. So the first time you press it, you'll get no increase in damage. The second time you press it, you'll get a two times critical, da uh, critical multiplier. So basically two times damage. The third time you press it, you'll get four times damage. And this will stack up to eight times on the fourth time you press it. And pressing it even further beyond that point, you'll only get your eight times damage multiplier. So it's kind of nice to know how far you can actually go with this ability in terms of damage. So you can go up to eight times multiplier as soon as you've pressed it the final fourth time. Um, the epicenter, and one thing to note is 
on the epicenter of this ability, you will get 100% chance that the target will get ignited on flame. And for the area around this ability where there are enemies presiding in that area, they have a half chance or something like that to be able to get hit on fire. Not all the time will everyone get hit on fire. So that's something that's interesting to know. Only the enemy that's initially hit or in the epicenter of the ability will get hit with fire damage. Immobilization. Protect Ember with flame armor that burns stronger over time, consuming energy once its meter is at full strength. Cast it again to extinguish the flame. Drain is 50 energy. Drain per second over time. This is at once it's at full meter. At full meter, it will start consuming more and more energy. And this is linear stacking. So if you keep the flame on for too long and it keeps on burning and it gets too bright or too hot, at this point, it'll start draining a huge amount of energy if you keep it on for too long. So the drain per second is 10 energy on a base. You got to keep in mind to be able to reduce the heat. And I'll tell you about that in a second. And your damage reduction on a base is 40 to 40 to 85%. So to maximize this out, you can go to, I believe it's around 6% ability strength to get the full 90% damage reduction on the maximums, maximized part of the ability. And for the base, which is 40%, this maximizes at 50%, meaning you need at least 50% added ability strength. So 50% to actually maximize this ability for its base amount of damage reduction, which would be 50%. Now, I want you to think about immobilization as a, uh, a burner or basically a, uh, what do they call those in the basement? You got this furnace. You got a furnace in your basement and the more heat that you apply into this ability, the more damage reduction you get off of this ability and how you apply and how you add heat or how you add those logs onto the fire is via fireball and inferno the more that you use these two abilities you're adding and you're stacking those logs into your furnace you're adding more and more heat so you have more heat growth and how you actually expand that energy and basically release that energy so you don't get as hot or as quickly as hot is you use fire blast fire blast is an aoe where you just push out that energy from your core and you're releasing a huge amount of that heat so you're not just getting as hot as often so this is how you build up the fire is using fireball and inferno and to release that energy and to get rid of that heat you're using fire blast to reduce the amount of heat this is a very good ability in terms of just damage reduction, but this again is where I say it's inconsistent because the more you fill up your meter, the more damage reduction you get. The less that your bar is filled, the less damage reduction you get. So at zero on your meter, you'll get 0% or 50% damage reduction. As soon as the bar is filled, you'll get 90% damage reduction. So it adds 40% based upon your power strength but this is really inconsistent because the bar will always fill up faster and or it will always be at the same level. And of course, you're, since you're pressing abilities and you're always using all of her abilities all the time, it just makes it very inconsistent across the board trying to actually use this ability for the damage reduction because it always is fluctuating. It's always changing its temperature. So that's, that is pretty annoying for this ability. Fire Blast. Slam the ground to create a wave of incinerating plasma that knocks enemies and strips their armor. Drain is 75 energy. Damage is 200 heat damage on a base. Radius is 25 meters. This is a pretty good range to be knocking down all those enemies. And armor reduction is 50% to 100%. Do not go overextended on this. Overextended will reduce your power strength and therefore reduce the amount of armor that's getting stripped, especially for Grenier units. You wanna be able to strip 100% of that armor. This is also built off of immobilization. When your meter is at maximized, when it's at that 90%, when it's all the way full, it will fully strip all the enemy's armor. If it is below that or at zero, it will not strip all of that armor. So if it's at zero, it'll only strip 
half of the armor, basically the same thing as if you applied heat to any unit. And if it's at halfway, it'll only deal and strip half of the enemy's armor. So it'll only deal, uh, strip half of that armor effectively. This is really annoying. Again, this is inconsistent because you have to wait for immobilization to hit its maximum peak for the heat and then to be able to dissipate that with this ability, giving you your best armor strip, which is at 100%. So again, this is all based upon heat levels and basically waiting for that to go off. This is kind of annoying though, because it, it hurts itself basically only in the damage in the damage reduction area because you're waiting for that bar to fully fill up to get your 100% damage reduction yes you get your 100% damage reduction but as soon as you extinguish the heat or you lose that heat now you're reducing your amount that you've actually reduced damage by so this pretty much only hurts your damage reduction which basically hurts your survivability so that is inconsistent in itself when you're trying to stay alive, and especially if you're trying to stay alive, this doesn't really help all that much. So there is that. Inferno. Command a flaming comet to crash down in front of Ember, engulfing enemies with a fire that can spread through their ranks. Drain on a base is nothing, so you don't have to do anything to press this ability. Energy per target is depending on how many targets are in your vision that's right in front of you that you can hit and the drain per target is 10 energy. So if you've got 10 units, you're spending 100 energy. This is why you wanna be very efficient with her. Make sure that your energy efficiency is at maximized so that you're not draining a whole bunch of energy, not only for Inferno, but for immobilization as the drain per second does catch up with you and you will be burning through a lot of that energy. So you wanna be really efficient, as much efficient as you can as possible. The explosion radius is actually not the explosion radius here. The explosion radius is the selection radius, how many uh, enemies that you can see and how many enemies get hit with those infernos. So I would actually, instead of saying explosion radius here, I would be saying the selection radius. I would not be saying explosion radius. There's a little bit more confusion and having a little more clarity there. Knowing what the ability can actually do definitely helps. So selection radius, how many enemies that you can actually hit within that area of effect. The initial damage is impact and fire damage. Of course, we are hitting people with a meteor here. So we are gonna be doing 2,500 impact and heat damage combined. Damage per second is based upon the enemies that actually get hit. When an enemy gets hit, it will be dealing damage to itself and enemies around it being around 350 damage heat to 700 damage heat as well. I don't know if you press this ability, if it increases its damage or not, I'd have to double check and make sure, but uh, there is some way that it does increase the damage here for the tick. And the duration is 15 seconds that these enemies are lit on fire quite literally, and they start dealing damage. Alrighty, shall we take a look at the abilities? Yeah. All right. Oh, should we take a look at the mods? Yes. So I only have one real build for Ember. Um, there is quite a few things that you can improve upon with this build, but I'm just going to give a basic overall build just in case you don't want to be using Archon shards. And then I will give a build based upon Archon shards and fully maximizing Ember's ability. So starting off, we're going to start off with Steel Charge. This adds melee damage. Melee damage is really, really good in this game. Prime sure-footed, if you haven't seen the Trinity video, make sure that you don't get knocked down. This really helps with just not getting knocked down and staying on your feet all the time. Arcane Energize for maximized energy back as she uses casting abilities all the time. We want to make sure that we can keep our energy at maximum or if we do get zapped, that we get our energy back. Arcane Guardian for 75% added damage reduction, basically adding 900 bonus armor. This is really good. And maximized battery as we are casting our abilities all the time with Embers. We are never off of our abilities ever with Ember because we're building up that heat, we're dissipating that heat, we're building up more heat, we're dissipating that heat, and we're trying to build up the heat and we're trying to dissipate the heat again. So we are always using our abilities. So Primed Flow for maximized battery. We are not going to be draining a whole bunch of energy here because we're going to be going 
full efficient with our abilities. We do not want to be going any higher with our negative efficiency here. We want to be maxed out at 75%, basically having a quarter of our energy drained. So this is really good, especially for just immobilization and Inferno, making sure that we can just cast our abilities without having to go, oh no, I ran out of energy. You will run out of energy quick if you are not efficient with it. Oh yeah. So maximized energy. We are going prime continuancy to negate fleeting expertise. We want to stay at least at 100% duration to make sure immobilization drain per second is at 2.5. We do not want to be going negative duration here because then our drain per second will double. So making sure we have lots of duration. We do not want to be going narrow-minded with this type of build. We want range for Inferno. So we are going overextended because we love lots of range so that if we're on planes of Archon or planes of Eidolon or anything like that, we are able to hit a huge group of enemies with Inferno. The range on this is around 50 meters, so this is almost to the point of Ash's ability. Now for the main build, we are looking at Umbral Vitality for added a little bit of health, and Umbral Intensify for adding a little bit of ability strength, and Augur Street Secrets to gain 24% added ability strength. Combined, we're looking at 119 percent ability strength to maximize our immobilization we need 25 percent with one heat proc upon her passive we're at 124 percent we only need a little bit to be able to maximize her 85 percent to go to 90 we only need six percent so this does enough to cap the top end of the ability where we get as much damage reduction as we can get but this does not help with the baseline because we need more power strength here to be able to actually get the minimum damage reduction up even further if you were going to just keep this as a baseline build and you weren't going to invest any archon shards instead of using our secrets i would recommend umbral fiber even though you lose two percent ability strength because you're negating umbral intensify you would pretty much gain a lot more armor and that would make you tankier alongside Umbral Vitality, making sure that you just don't go down. And Umbral Intensify would more than make up for the Argor Secrets, even if it's at 2% below. Now, if you're looking at Archon Shards and you're like, I want to maximize Ember to deal a ton of damage, this build is not for you. I would recommend going instead of Umbral Vitality, going Archon Vitality. This makes it so that status effects from abilities that deal heat damage will be applied twice. So now your tick damage for any heat that you deal, which she is fire, she will deal fire all the time, will deal double damage. So your heat ticks, your heat procs will deal double damage. And you might be thinking, well, I want to add on Archon to intensify. This does not, this is not, this is even more inconsistent even more inconsistent. So what you need for this is you add 30% ability strength on a base, restoring health or healing yourself with abilities grants an additional 30% ability strength for 10 seconds. So you have to heal yourself. She does have an augment, which is healing flame for your fire blast. And this makes it so that each enemy that is hit by Ember adds 25 to 50 health back to yourself, depending on the current immobilization level so that's based upon immobilization how high or how hot your thermostat is on your internal core but for fire blast this is actually very inconsistent because you have to be having taken damage you have to have taken damage then hit fire blast and if you're not at full health then will arch on intensify grant the added 30% ability strength. If you are already at full health and you are maximized and then you hit Fire Blast with this augment and you heal yourself, then it won't do the added ability strength. This is very inconsistent. I would not use Archon Intensify. I would only be using Archon Vitality. So a good augment 
for a full build with Arctron shards, I would use, of course, Arctron Vitality, replacing Umbral Vitality. I would keep Umbral Intensify even at the 44%. 44% on it base is not bad. I would not be going Transient Fortitude because it goes negative ability duration and or Blind Rage because it goes negative efficiency, and that's just very bad for your drain per second and overall your entire efficiencies across the board. So Archon Vitality instead of Umbral Vitality, keep the Umbral Intensify for added ability strength. We will actually be changing around Augur Secrets because we can add on more ability strength via Crimson Shards. We will actually be going with Exothermic. We will be going with Exothermic, however you say that. It's exothermic. Inferno augment. Enemies that are killed while under the effects. It doesn't say killed by the Inferno. You can kill them while they're under the effects of Inferno. Have a 15% chance to drop an energy orb. This is wonderful when paired with Arcane Energize because then you'll be getting a whole bunch of energy orbs, making it so that your entire team can cast abilities nonstop. This is is actually 5% better than Archon Flow because abilities have 5% higher chance to drop an energy orb and there is no cooldown on that augment. There is no cooldown. So you will be able to spam energy orbs across the board, keeping your abilities up and running. So this I would definitely put instead of Augur Secrets. Now we do have overextended on for this type of a build, so we will be at 40% ability strength starting out. Then we'll be at 44 or 84% adding Umbral Intensify. Now when we're looking at our Archon Shards to add ability strength, we'll be adding three of them on. If you have them at Tower Forged, this will be 45%. This will take you from 84% all the way to 129%. So you will be above that 25% zone, making it so that your basic immobilization is at 50% at minimum. This is wonderful because then at all times will you have that minimum of 50% damage reduction across the board. And then when you fill up the bar, of course, you'll get that full 90% damage reduction. And of course, with our remaining two Archon Shards, I would recommend using casting speed Archon Shards. This will add 75% of casting speed across the board, making it so you can just keep on casting Inferno, Fireball, or any other ability that you want to across the board faster and deadlier, obviously. <laughs> Fasting casting speed, adding ability strength across the board just adds a lot of damage. And because we have Archon Vitality on that type of a build, this would make it so that any heat that you deal will be applied twice, making your tick damage deal double damage. This is a very good build for Ember, if you were going to be going for a full maximized Archon Shard type of a build. But other than that, shall we go ahead and test out the build? We shall. All righty. I would be interested in seeing what happens with a full Archon Shard build. I do not uh, have... Archon shards currently available to put onto uh, Ember. No. But this would be pretty cool to see what she would be at maximized. All right. No! I got it. <laughs> I wanted to do that. I got it. All right. So you can see right off the base, we don't have the ability maximized. So we are at 48% for immobilization. And we will be adding on heat. And our percentage will actually increase faster. The more we use our heat type abilities, our percentage will grow. Oh, uh, yeah. And if we had her augment on for exothermic, we would be dropping a ton of energy orbs right now. Cool. So now I'm at maximized heat. I want to be using my dissipate 
my fire blast because if I have too much heat, then I'll be draining more energy and there's no reason to be draining more energy. So I want to be using my fire blast as soon as I hit that 90% point or that 100% point. No. This is like when you have a fever. You always got to be checking your temperature. You're like, ah, <laughs> yeah. I'm too hot. She is very good. Very, very good. Boom. And it just stripped their armor. I liked oh. it. So fiery. I love my blue fire. It's so pretty. Oh, I like my orange. This is nice and warm. <laughs> blue looks cold. Where did everybody go? I killed them all. Yeah. Like, don't get too hot. Ah! You gotta dispel your heat. It's like, no. Yeah. I just don't like having to spam abilities so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is why you have to go full efficient. Because you're always on your toes with your abilities going, okay, what do I need to press next? This is why I have maximized ability efficiency, though, is that we're not worried about, oh, my ultimate, uh, my fire blast is at full. I need to actually use fire blast. You can use it at any point in time. You're not rushing it. Yeah. It's a war. It is Vor. Where is Vor? Did you get him? I don't know. I don't see him, but that was an Eximus. There he is. Ah, oh, my armor strip didn't work on him. God. Hey. We got fired up too. We're fired up. All fired up. Fired up and ready to serve. <laughs> That's a Blitzcrank reference. Oh, yeah. Blitzcrank. You shall not know where the reference is from. Oh. You're just fired up and ready to serve. Shall we go? We shall. All right.
All righty. Well, that was Ember. She's really good as just adding on fire damage, I guess, for if you're having conditioned overload or something like that. But you can tell for the majority of her abilities, there's a lot of spamming going on and a lot of just kind of rushing things. And this is where I just find it's very inconsistent in terms of just being able to use the Warframe because you're always losing your damage reduction all the time and you always have to make sure that your fire blast is always at 90 percent so that you always strip that armor and if you hit it too soon or too early then you're not fully stripping all that armor so in that case i just find it to be really inconsistent especially when it comes to armor strippage or even the damage reduction here, because there are other frames such as Mag, or Frost, or Trinity, or just straight up Nyx, that can just strip armor all the time consistently, and they always do, like even with Frost, or Trinity, have a consistent form of damage reduction. And this is something that I feel for Ember is just kind of floating there. It's like, okay, I have a damage reduction, but not all the time is that not 90%. Most of the time, it's going to be at 67, if not 75%. And then a lot of the time, you're just going to be using your Fire Blast, and it's going to be reduced from 90% damage reduction down to 60% or something like that, where it's just not very consistent. Even her Armor Strip, you have to always be using it, and uh, it just becomes kind of a pain because you have to fight ability itself it is a very fast ability you can get your damage reduction up very very quickly but as soon as you go to that 90 percent point that's where you're going to be draining a whole lot of your energy so you can have it up at maximized and it doesn't hurt too bad but as soon as you drain too much energy you're going to find your energy is zapped very very quickly running out of energy her ultimate is very very useful for the damage i would love to see a maximized build and see the very much so potential of something with Archon Vitality because you're going to be dealing double damage with heat procs. Again, the build would be just the same as it is here. You're going to be adding on Archon Vitality and I would be adding on Exothermic to get your energy orbs back. And then beyond that point, I would be adding three Archon Shards, Red Crimson Archon Shards, for added ability strength, your ability strength should be at 129%. And then adding to for uh, ability casting speed. So your ability casting speed is at the fastest that it can be for Ember. And that way you get your full damage reduction and you get your full damage off in this case. But other than that, it would be kind of interesting to see it. But again, I don't see really all that much potential with it as fire damage only takes off half of their armor. If you can with fire blast, it does take off the full amount of armor, but still it's kind of just inconsistent and it's a little bit more harder to use, but it's still pretty useful. I'd have to say I wouldn't use any of her other augments. Her other augments are just kind of meh. Even if you're looking at imbalance radiance, it only adds half of immobilization's damage reduction. So you're looking at 25% to 45% damage reduction. At this point, I would rather be adding on something like Trinity to give blessing to everyone to give 75% damage reduction rather than just a measly 25% to 45%. So it's not really as useful as this seems. But other than that, is that all the time you have for this episode? Unfortunately, yes. And I would love to see Ember with a full build. That would be that would be awesome to see what the <laughs> potential could be. I'd love to see that from you guys. Well, is that all the time we have for this episode? Unfortunately, yes. And we will see you guys in the very next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.